I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ears, the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever Hey everybody, Lady Cheryl here, and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to share with you some things that I'm doing around the food forest so that when I go out of town on vacation, it won't need any watering or any maintenance whatsoever. Okay, I hope you enjoy this video. Let's get started. Okay guys, I'm in the greenhouse spraying my fruit trees again, my citrus trees with this uh, garlic onion and red pepper flakes that I ferment to repel insects. And this area right here, remember I told you guys I was gonna dig it up? Well, <laughs> there are a lot of seeds down there. Marigolds and zinnia seeds. I'm gonna let this stay till I come back for vacation so I can just prick these out and put them where I want them to go, even right here where the bed used to be. And we noticed them when we were uh, making the, uh, the pathway to, to build this garden bed or to narrow the garden bed. But I said, let's just leave them there. And as you can see here, they're popping up where I put some of them, some down here. I'm gonna just scoop these up when I come back. I'm not gonna bother trying to um, dig them up now. Let them get a little bit stronger. Okay, so happy about that. The next thing I'm going to do is going to tackle that project right there. I'm going to gently divide that pepper plant and put both of them, there's two of them, two seedlings uh, that I was growing together. I'm going to put them right there where that rake is, where I treated the bed because Bria found a hornworm over there. So, yeah. So this should be really nice when I go on vacation. Everything should be okay in here. I love that pot right here. It was only a dollar. I put two of them together. Because those inexpensive pots, they kind of like bust out at the bottom. So instead of throwing them away, I put two together and I'm going to plant uh, an echinacea there. Purple cone flower. I'm going to put that here and just leave that over there, probably in that corner right there in the shade till I come back. So I've got some potting up and transplanting to do this morning. And I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out and share okay, with you. I'm trying to get this done before it rains. I got two pepper plants. Let me put one here. Filling a root. Yep. Let's get that out of the way. I'll put it right here. But now, And I'm not going to plant it real deep because I have a lot of soil in the container. Let's get these roots out of here. Man. Oh, okay. Something. Some metal in here. Oh, a rock. Okay, I'll just put it right there. Now, try to mash on here to get this loosened up. It's a lot of good soil. Okay, it's trying to come out now. some of the soil that it 
is growing in. That's what it's accustomed to. I don't want to go too deep. That'll work. Okay. And let's get this one in. All right. Here. Making sure there aren't any deep roots still in here. Get some of the soil that it was accustomed to. Here's a marigold. I'm going to sprinkle some of these things around. I could put them where I want later. And that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Two pepper plants. And I'm going to remove some leaves. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead on and put my cages on them. I'd like to put them on early before the roots start spreading out and then they get disturbed. Okay, so that's it. So this is some good soil here. I'm just gonna make a, a nice hole right in here in the center. And I'm going to, instead of using this pot, I'll save it for something else. And I'll just use the pot that the pepper plant came out of. I will take this cone fly, this echinacea, and the roots are real bound. So I'm gonna loosen them up. This is another one of those plants I got for a dollar at the clearance section on Lowe's. It too was on life support. So we'll flare that out, drop it in nicely. That's it. It's getting ready to rain, I hope. If not, I will come out here and water it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap. Nice. Nice and nice. And if I didn't tell you before, that's my Aunt Lois, who was gardening in her 80s, passed away a few years ago. I named this plant Aunt Lois because I went by her house after the funeral and collected some seeds. I tried growing it last year. It died while I was on vacation. I think it is in a better spot this time, and it'll be fine. Okay. The general rule is that you prune your trees, your fruit trees, in North Texas, Zone 8A, in the late fall or early uh, winter. But I can't do that sometimes. And when you're gardening in small spaces, and even though I purchased dwarf trees, you can see this is really overhanging um, in the walkway and on the walkway over here. So I do what I have to do. And I follow the guide of the how to grow a little free tree in your backyard. And I'll insert that book right here. And I prune when I need to prune. I was waiting until the sun was coming out and it's out now. It's still a little overcast. And I try not to prune, you know, when it's raining. So it can, the uh, wound can heal up. But I don't really worry about little branches like these that have green wood. I concern myself with the branches that have hardwood. So I can't 
keep doing limbo every time I go up under here and nor can I do it on this side. I'm just waiting for that apricot to get right. And there's a peach up over there. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked from the beauty. I'm getting ready to take some of these branches off and you want to sanitize your pruners between uh, cutting uh, off of different trees. And of course, every time you see any damage, these trees are not damaged. So I'm gonna go ahead and prune the branches off and I'll be back. Okay, so now you can see I can get through the pathway down here. And this is what I removed. I noticed some ants and that's an indication of uh, maybe aphids on this tree and I didn't see any ladybugs. So I'm going to spray this tree. The first chance that I get uh, when temperatures are below 85 degrees, I'm gonna spray it with neem oil, water, and dish soap. But these trees are growing beautifully. Now I'm gonna sanitize my pruners with alcohol and I'm moving over to these dwarf trees because I gotta get some of this out of the way. And I only got one peach on that tree. It, it's not gonna produce until next year. And I know these leaves are gonna all fall down in the fall of the year, early winter, but I'm gonna take them out now because I'm tired of bumping into them when I'm uh, going down the pathway. Now, this is something that I wanna share with you. You see all these lower branches down right here? I'm gonna be cutting them down. I'll be trimming them in the winter. Right now I'm gonna leave them here to shade plants. Okay, so I'm gonna step back. And these trees, three of them, actually it's another bed right behind it with two cherry trees. But uh, as long as they're out the pathway, I'm gonna go ahead and let them grow tall, let the squirrels and birds get the fruit at the top and we'll get the fruit from six feet on down. Sometimes I tell myself I'm gonna top them down a little shorter. I don't know, maybe I will. But right now, in order to do that, I have to get on a ladder. I'm not gonna do that while no one's here. All these bricks around this bed, they will be um, used like on the greenhouse to keep the plastic in place. Okay, just a little side note. All of the hardwood would be put in my wood chipper to use as mulch. Nothing goes to waste. Softwood can be used in the compost. Okay, guys, it's raining a little bit, just drizzling. But I want to give you an overview of how I protected all of the raised garden beds. If you look right here, you'll see that I put 90% shade. In some areas, I've double clipped them because, you know, when it gets real windy, uh, they can come off. And... Um, Show you how the beds are looking up under the shade cloth. Looking real good. It got a lot of okra. Got something biting. Nibbling up for this one right here. I'll spray again the repellent before I leave. And even over here, I have 50% shade cloth. If you guys remember just a few days ago, I showed you this with the uh, zinnia seeds and how I cut all of the rainbow swiss shard down. I'm going to lift this up so you can see. It, it grows very well. I can grow this all year long. And the seeds that I put over here in those little pots, you can see they are up. Looking good. And yeah, I'm very happy. Okay, so now I'm going to show you another bed over here. And this one just has strawberries in it. They were in hanging baskets. I'm trying to get this up some. They were in hanging baskets. These two right here, but I put them in this uh, grow box so they can have waste soil while I'm gone. And more strawberries here. Uh, let's see. There's a bed of grow boxes right here up under 90% shade cloth. And these are all strawberries. Let's see if I can get it up. Let's 
see three boxes of strawberries that were burning up, but I'll get a second crop of strawberries uh, early fall. Okay. And let me see what I'm missing. Oh, the other bed on the other side of that magnolia tree. I'll be right back. I'll take you over there. So I have three grow, grow boxes here with 90% shade. And I'll lift it up so you can see. These two boxes, will, I will put beans and then here are my little Swiss chard seedlings that I've been uh, germinating and growing under here. I was gonna move this Miho Satsuma, try to get it on a dolly. It's entirely too heavy and so is this pepper plant. There are three pepper plants in here. One I just broke off. Hopefully it'll come back and you can see the sweet peppers down here. And here is the third plant. It's a cayenne pepper. And it has a lot of peppers on them. And this is what I use. Of course, you know, the seasoned food, but I also make pepper flakes out of it as well. I'm gonna leave this right here and I'm gonna take this 50% shade cloth. I'll just put it right there. In fact, I'll probably go get a 12 by 12 one and just shade this whole area. All of this is going in the grow room, but I'll shade this Miho Satsuma right here, these pepper plants, as well as the Gorilla cart that I've been using for herb garden. And then I have asparagus here. Okay, so I got the cherry tree over here covered up, the Miho Satsuma, the petunias, the three pepper plants are covered and the gorilla cart <laughs> herb bed is all covered up and the asparagus and i just need to put one more clip <clears throat> right there to secure that and that'll be nice okay all of this right in here should be fine i am so happy that this tree only a half of it died it's getting ready to start turning colors the figs it is loaded with figs guys but i'm gonna tell you just like i'm watching all these things the squirrels are watching them too so i have to really time everything and get out here and harvest before they beat us when i say us i mean bria and me we were the ones that were coming out here and getting the figs every day but they are growing you know, a lot of figs. That's that baby tree. You remember, guys, that we started? Something was eating it here. I kept spraying it with Nemo on and finally stopped. Um, I'm not taking you on tour, but I will just share with you these two uh, pear trees. One is an Asian pear. Uh, they're going to be cut down real low. I don't want this to get real tall. And they're growing like crazy. Okay, so we're gonna go over here. Here are some sunflowers. The banana plants, I told you guys, that came back. I mean, they are growing like crazy now. I water these plants every day unless it rains. You can see all the raindrops that it rained very well. But they are taking over they being the banana plants are taking over the um, prayer garden so I may have to move it um yeah but you see yellowing here because I've been watering it so much but they are growing and I'm just so thankful and grateful to God that these banana plants came back and some of the pups are real close together I don't know if I can call them pups now because they're growing so tall, but I will be separating them. Okay, so I have some plants behind the banana plants and everything is being shaded over here by the mulberry tree. And remember when I cut it down to six feet tall? Look at it now. The more you prune it, the more it will grow and uh, the more mulberries you get. I'll get another harvest. Okay, uh, let's see what else. The sweet potatoes are doing good. I haven't shown you them in a while. They are doing very well. 
and they're being shaded by everything that's behind me, the banana plants and the mulberry tree. So they should be fine. They can take a lot of sun anyway. Now let's get to the greenhouse. I'm walking through here. And you can see everything is doing fine. When I leave, I'm going to let all of the shade cloth over in here completely down so everything won't dry out. Uh, but I am hoping that this walkway will dry out. Dry out. And if it's not dried out by the time I come back, I'm going to put straw all down here so that I won't fall. And over here, I don't know why I'm talking so low. That was what I plant, uh, transplanted yesterday. The uh, echinacea, my Aunt Lois plants, the two pepper plants, and then I have a few okra plants, but the rest of these plants all down this lane are peppers. Okay? All right. Look at my fruit trees. The citrus fruit trees, I'm gonna go in closer. They all have transitioned well from the positions that they were in. I've sprayed them three times with my repellent that's made out of garlic see it here onion and red pepper flakes and if it doesn't rain before I go uh, I'll spray them again okay so that's it that's in a nutshell is how I protected my food forest for vacation and we are blessed this year that the forecast is temperatures will not be over 95 degrees while on the way and everything that doesn't have the safety of having uh, moisture in the ground like the fruit trees and bushes and vines to draw water deep from the ground all the uh, everything else is in um, covered with shade so I think everything will be fine I appreciate you watching this video and I hope you all have a blessed week and I'll see you soon. Please join me tomorrow, that's Monday, July 12th, for my weekly Monday night live chat at 7 p.m. Central Time. Now, the following week, I'll still be on vacation, so I won't have the live chat on Monday, July 19th. Take care, everybody. You know I love you and God loves you too. See you real soon.